All right, so in the last video, I showed you how to output a GIF animation file once your animation was finished. And then at the end of it, I got it set up to make a refined storyboard, which is like this. It'll be nine panels, but they'll be made up of the different frames from your animation. So for instance, I now have this deck of playing cards with all of my frames, and I can just deal the deck. So if I turn on auto select layer, you know, I can just tell the story the way I want. Right. Pick which, which panels will tell it best. But I want to go over those steps one more time. So I'm going to close this and not save it. I'll recreate it. And I want to go back to, um, my stage file and show you a few things. I am done now with my assets PSD, so I'm going to save that, but first let me delete this merged file, this last merged file I added. So then I save it and I close it and I don't need it anymore. Right? But what I do need is my stage, because your stage is where your final animation comes from. I'm going to open up my stage file. I want to make sure it plays the way I want, but let's say I wanted to make a change to my animation. And I actually see a change I want to make to my animation. These are going to be in-frame changes, just plays playing with timing. And it's starting with um, frame number 21 through 28. I want to speed those up. So I'm going to select 21 through 28, those frames, and I'm going to make them only 0.2 seconds. So it gets sucked in a little bit faster. And that kind of makes the shaking of the background make a little bit more sense. It's just more violent. And then it's, then it's really slow and subtle. All right. Now, let's say I wanted to make adjustments at this point. This is not ideal. But let's say I wanted more atmosphere to change in these transitions, right? This slowdown. Well, what I could do is maybe make a duplicate of this frame without having to change any layers. What I would do is just say new frame and it will give me two of that frame. And then what I would do is take that frame and I would slowly fade in this one above it. So I'm doing a little internal in-between. So it goes from this to this to this, as opposed to just from this to this, <laughs> right? These are all little frame animation adjustments that you can do. And then if I wanted to animate a new element, this is where it gets tricky. And this is why you always want to throw away your frames before you bring new ones in. But I want some atmosphere. Well, I can build a little texture overlay, right? I can steal some of this cloud. I can hit Command J and duplicate it, but that makes it on a new layer, right? And so now that little chunk of cloud is going to be on every layer. So what do I do? Well, then it's not impossible to fix. I just select every layer and I turn off that cloud at the top, right? And now it's turned off in every layer. But if I need it, I can turn it on. So let's say for this layer, I want that cloud and I want to stretch it and have it be a texture overlay, right? I'm going to want to delete from the edges of it. But because now I have programmed it in, it's no longer going to show up in every other frame. But this is now a layer on my stage, which is really just an asset, right? And I'll burn it in some areas. So I want that, that new asset to play with. Now let's play with it in these other frames. Let's play with the opacity, play with its placement,
So it goes from there to there, play with it there. It's building it up kind of slowly, play with its placement, erase out the bottom edge. Just so as it's resetting, it looks a little bit more dynamic. So this is called in-frame animating. Instead of setting everything up with your assets and then taking a picture and bringing it over, which is kind of stodgy, but it helps you really understand how it works. You can be more uh, interactive with in-frame animating as long as you know how it works, <laughs> because it can go bad really quickly. Ah, I don't know why it's, my selections are sticking that way. So I want to keep that air moving through, right? And remember the frame, you can animate uh, the placement in frame, but I can't like warp it or anything without losing it. Okay, and this one, I'm gonna start fading it out. And this one, I'll fade it out a little bit as well. And this one, I'll fade it out a little bit. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference. So now my set to reset, yeah, now it has some, some air movement in it. It's like a clean breeze came in. And then I might say, you know what? What the heck? On that very first frame, I want just a little bit of that in there. Let's do 10%, 11%. That first frame looks a little too clean. Okay, so I made some changes to my animation there. One big change where I have now um, a layer that's not a frame, right? Instead, a layer that's an asset to some frames. Okay, now, am I happy with my animation? I think so. Yes, I like it. Okay, so now, ah, oh, but I see something. Ah, uh, you see that? That little blip, if I was being really perfectionist, that comes from my dodging layer, and I would get rid of that whenever the, the creature isn't there. But you know what? I'm okay with it. <laughs> so if I'm happy with my animation, which it takes a long time to perfect it, so don't be perfectionist, then I save it. So my stage is final now. My animation is final. It's on the stage but I need to output it by going to File, Export, not Save As. If you just save as a GIF, it will just flatten it all into one image at a low quality. So instead you say Export, and then you go Save for Web Legacy to get to the GIF animation script options. Only once your animation's playing the way you want it to play. Then you want to make sure that the colors are what you want. You can do, I suggest either adaptive or perceptual. I've chosen adaptive. And you want to make sure it plays okay in the preview. Even though the preview is even worse than what it will really look like. But it kind of shows you the sacrifices you're making. And it's playing slower than it will play as well. Because the preview, you know, just processes at a different speed. Once you're happy with it, I like the quality of Bicubic smoother. You just say save. I'm gonna save it to the desktop as a GIF. This is my second one. I've already saved one option. So I'm gonna call it assignment five, final animation two to the desktop. It's going to show up. And then I want to test it in a web browser. Come on. Uh, 
rest in peace, Bob. Yep. There we go. All right. So there it is. So I have two gifts. This is one of them. I will open one in Chrome. This is my new one, open in Chrome. Gives you a black background around it. And then this is my old one in Safari. Has a white background around it. The image quality looks good. Yeah, I like that addition. So I definitely want to use the new one. Okay, so I'm going to delete my old one. And now I've got my animation file. I can put it up to Photo Bucket. See if my sketch ever came in. I don't see it. So let me make sure I get my sketch in there. I think I left before it came in fully. So I'm going to put my sketch on the desktop so I remember. And then I have my GIF. But there's a third thing I need. I need this clean version of the storyboard. So that's the next step. So once your animation is outputted, you've tested the GIF, it works. It's fewer than 100 frames, so it shouldn't be too large for Photo Bucket. Then you can go to your stage, and now we're going to turn the stage files into um, a deck of playing cards with one frame on the card, right? So to do that, I have to go to my very top layer, go to my very last frame in my animation, go to my timeline options just like you made frames from layers we're now going to do the opposite we are going to flatten our frames into new layers which photoshop will nicely call us or title for us as frames instead of layers so how did i do that i'll i'll undo it and do it again once you're you've saved your gif you've tested it it works you go to your last frame you go to your very top layer you select both of those and then you go to your timeline window options and you're going to say flatten frames into layers and you click there. And what that does is it creates, for all of your animated frames, it creates a new fresh layer that's 100% opacity, all filled in. And then you wanna delete anything that's not a frame. So all the stuff underneath, including my little floating cloud here. Hold down shift, select all those, everything underneath the frame, including the background, hit delete. Okay. Now we have a deck of cards, right? Now in order to arrange them in our storyboard, I need to get rid of all my frames. So I'm gonna select all those, drag them to the trash. Okay, now I've got my deck of cards, eight inches by 13 or by 11 inches by 150 pixels per inch. To give myself a little bit more room, I can turn off the timeline under window. I need space to deal these cards out because I need nine of them to tell my story. So I'm gonna go to image size, sorry, canvas size, and I'm gonna grow the table around these cards where I have eight as a dimension and all of you should have eight as one of your dimensions. I'm going to make that dimension 30 inches. And then the height or whatever the thing that isn't your eight that you make 30, you're going to quadruple. And you can do a little bit more if you need because you can always crop down. So I'm going to change this, which is roughly 11 to 44. I'm going to grow from the center. So now I have a table and in the center is my stack of 38 cards. What do I do? I'm going to lay out now. Uh, the layout tools in Photoshop are not great. They are guides and grids, right? So to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna create a new layer at the very bottom. So I don't have to see this checkerboard and I'm going to fill that new layer in with white, 100% white. Then I'm going to use the guide tools to make a box around my deck of cards. This is like how to learn to be a, a Vegas card shark or card dealer. 